Well, joining us here on Christmas Clatter, Jerry and Patrick from uh, Christmas Without Cancer. You guys have heard me talk about them the past uh, few weeks, um, selling the T-shirts and other merchandise to uh, raise money for them. They uh, they love Christmas. They have great hearts. They're just trying to help families that are battling cancer, trying to make Christmas happen. They have branched out into other holidays, and I just know talking with Patrick through text and over the phone that uh, he'd fit right in with the. Uh, uh, us here at the Christmas Clatter family and Jerry, Patrick, thanks so much for joining me. Thank you. Thanks, Todd, for having us. Oh, great, uh, Jerry. From what I heard from Patrick, that the you're kind of the the founder of Christmas Without Cancer, and every great idea starts as a seed. You know, starts somewhere, it rolls around in in your brain at first, and then you know it leads you to take some action. So just take us back to when uh, Christmas Without Cancer was was that idea and and that spark. All right. Um, about 18 years ago, I, w I'm, I was an oncology nurse at Advocate Christ Medical Center, and I, um, I had several patients, and I just loved the oncology patients, but there was one young family that stood out to me, and they were struggling and facing financial difficulty. They had a young baby. So I just thought, well, I'm going to reach out to some family and friends and see what we can do for them. And in a matter of two days, I had gift cards, presents, ornaments, Christmas decorations, even dog food, baby food, diapers, everything, you, anything you could imagine. And we dropped it off at their house. And it was just such a beautiful time for the family. Mm -hmm. And um, so the following year, I, I kept it going because um, my young patients, she had passed away, the patient I was talking about. Oh, mercy. So her husband um, and brother contacted me and said, could we do this for another family? I said, absolutely. So, of course, there's always another cancer patient with a young family. And we um, reached out to them and helped them. But over the years, the, it just kind of caught on. We started helping more people locally. And the support in our community and the fundraising that we do has just brought us to such a level where we not only help people at uh, Christmas time, but we do it all year round because cancer happens all year round, not just yeah. at Christmas. So uh, we help with um, rent, mortgage, tuition. Um, we give gift cards for gas, medications, groceries, hospital parking. Uh, sometimes we can help with transportation issues. And, um, you know, as long as our budget allows it, we are there for these patients. Oh, that, that's wonderful. I, I, I really love that it's Christmas without cancer, but you're helping year round because uh, I sign off every episode of Christmas clatter with, uh, with the phrase, keep Christmas hope alive every day. You oh. know, and, and it's like, that's like the, the perfect, you know, you know, you guys are, you're, you're living it and you're doing it. And, and, uh, I just love that, uh, sentiment and you're right. You know, cancer doesn't, you know, it has no season or, or no rhyme or reason at no, times. And, no, no. and unfortunately, uh, the day and age we live, I think, I don't think there's someone alive that hasn't been, uh, touched by having a loved one, uh, with cancer or themselves. So Patrick, how did you get involved with the Christmas without cancer? Yeah. So, um, about five years ago, uh, my dad was diagnosed with a cancer called non-Hodgkin lymphoma. Um, and he's, you know, right here in the neighborhood. That's where we live right around the corner from Jerry. Um, and everybody wanted to help my dad out. And that's just, uh, that's just the, not the guy, the kind of guy he is. He didn't want people helping him. Right. But he wanted to find a way that people can give mm -hmm. without having, you know, giving it to him. Right. Um, so he found this organization, Christmas without cancer. Um, and his first event was a, uh, a haircutting event. You know, he was going through chemotherapy right. and, you know, he was losing his hair. So he found so a way, fun. yeah, he <laughs> found a way to be able to, cut his hair with so many family, friends, neighbors, you know, even the mayor of Evergreen Park and here, he, came. he yes. came out, um, you know, got his hair cut. So he was able to shave his head with his whole, all his family and everybody there with him, um, all while raising money for a special organization. Oh, wow. That's it was fantastic. Not, it really was. And the support your dad had was amazing. I was like, wow, this is. Yep. That's yeah. why we, we continue, you know, Happy to have myself and you know my entire family back this organization, and uh, we continue to do it day in and day out, and we love doing it. Your dad is, uh, you know, 
truly special to have that much that many people show up and support and, and things and i could just you know I, I haven't met him but i could just see people rallying rallying around him and 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 uh, you know taking that to heart because it is such a battle you know uh, right now his dad has a huge heart too yeah and he's you know he's just that kind of guy and a neighborhood guy and everybody knows him everybody yeah. loves him and he's been through so much jim his dad has yeah and no matter what, Jim and the McKeever family is always there behind us. And it's it's great. It's yeah. it's great. It's uh it's a pleasure. Yeah. I know Patrick's told me that his dad's the you know, the big Christmas fan in the, in the family, the big Christmas yeah, fanatic. I, and, I was uh, telling him I didn't think until I, I met you, I didn't really think his <laughs> love for Christmas could be matched. You know, as I'm looking at you sitting in front of a Christmas tree. This is uh, this is the first. So <laughs> There is a blow up Santa in front of the house right here. Oh, yeah. With a countdown. So, with I think a it's, countdown it's, to Christmas. I think we're so. at 72 days now. Yes. Yeah, it sounds about right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, yeah every, every day. Scary when you drive by. <laughs> uh, it's, that's just fantastic. He, he, he is my kind of people. Absolutely. I mean, you would love him. Yeah, my, you would. Yeah, my, my, uh, my mom right now, as we speak, her house is in shambles because she's decorating right now getting the whole inside ready and, and wow was all this yeah. time when you were a kid too you ce celebrated christmas like starting in september or october uh, we didn't do it that early when i was a kid uh my mom was diehard real christmas tree person uh -huh. so we always waited till the weekend after thanksgiving because that was like the earliest you could actually go cut a tree and still have it viable at christmas uh -huh. you know? and uh but the enthusiasm was there and then um and then once like artificial trees got better in the way they looked and and held look up real uh, <laughs> right uh they uh you know mom kind of <laughs> went that direction because she wanted to decorate earlier and and you know it's to decorate that early you have to have an artificial tree um for some oh, yeah. reasons and, and stuff and and so she has depending on you know when she was working you know she's retired now and, and her, my dad's retired but when she was working and and things she there was one year because she looked at the schedule and we started having our big family like we used to go to my my dad's parents house for thanksgiving and once uh, they got a little you know had some more age on them and they you know really it was a lot for them to host it they started doing it at my mom and dad's house and so one year my mom like looked at the schedule and was like okay i got thanksgiving i got to decorate for christmas we got this these things for work coming up so she decorated in august that year oh, so <laughs> make sure she she had enough time so um, but you know she, she, you know she puts up she puts up 25 trees and and she decorates every room of the house you know to the to the nines and so if you're gonna do that much decoration, you might as well put it up as early as you can, so you can right. enjoy all that hard work for as long as possible. And yeah, we'll, and we'll get started here soon. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, right after, <laughs> yeah. It's right after Halloween. No, yeah. oh, right after Halloween. Yeah. <laughs> I'm taking off the Sunday, Monday, Tuesday before Halloween. I took off work those days and to decorate. So, but my house isn't. I don't put up 25 trees. I don't. I don't have the physical room for them. I mean, I guess I could, but then you'd ha you'd just have pathways around the house, you right. know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, but but I get it honestly from my mom. My dad loves Christmas too, but he's not quite as enthusiastic as she is. But uh, I, I get it. I get it honestly from her. And and there's there's lots of people, Patrick, like your dad, that just something about Christmas is is their thing. You know, some people yeah. it's baseball or football or it's mm -hmm. you know movies or you know you name it. And some people think it's, Chris, it's yeah. Christmas, you know. It's, it's the most wonderful time of the year. Yeah. It is the most wonderful time of the year. It's just a perfect blend of <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. yeah, she'll call it the most stressful time of the year. <laughs> it it can be that too. And that's yeah. a, that's one thing well, I haven't. Uh, for Christmas, Christmas without cancer, um, we do, we sponsor several families for the holiday season that are affected by cancer. And uh, that's really the favorite time of the year for me. And I think most everybody on the committee, right. it is such a heartwarming day. And what we do is we obtain a Christmas list from the family 
at their Christmas wish list and uh, the committee, we form committees and uh, we purchase gifts for these families. And we have Santa present. If there's little kids in the family, it is by far the most heartwarming day. It's very bittersweet. Yeah. And to go, I've been doing this for a long time. Every year, mm -hmm. there's always several families that get me choked up, but it makes us, makes me feel proud that our organization is bringing this to these families at such a hard time. Right. So um, I'm glad we're able to do this. And I, you know, we have great, uh, I have a great committee. I do, uh, you know, like I have Patrick and I have Patrick's aunt and we have uh, myself and uh, Renee Copeland is our vice president. And, you know, what's since the, I'm going to be honest with you, since these younger people got involved, we have really grown tremendously and, I just think that's so great because we can help more families. Right. So, um, yeah, it's a pleasure to work with all of them. That, that's, that's wonderful to hear that uh, you, it, it's got to make you feel good to know that, uh, you've been doing it so long and, you, and you're finding people to kind of give some of those other, um, responsibilities and stuff too, and, and things, but you I, talked about, you know, every year, you know, something happens. Is there one particular family or one memory that just kind of just stands out above the others? Oh man. So <laughs> um which one? Uh, it was uh, we had a little boy in, in the community that had a very rare brain tumor, a DIPG brain tumor, which is just the worst tumor a pediatric patient could ever have. It's right at the brain stem. And um the family, I was there when the little boy was diagnosed and um, I found out she was from the, she was from the neighborhood and had up two other children. And um, I reached out to her and uh, spent time talking to her and kind of getting her through some rough times. And uh, we provide and we gave her some gift cards for gas because she was going back and forth to hospitals and Actually, they went all over the country to get treatment for this little boy. And we gave him Southwest Airline gift cards. But um, when we delivered Christmas to that family, there was a choir there. Oh, wow. From, um, I think it was Mother Macaulay. And um, here we were walking up to the house with these gifts and these beautiful girls dressed in white um, singing the Alleluia Chorus. And um, then I walked in the house and just saw this beautiful mom with these three little boys and this one little boy, he was just so sick. And um, yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was, like I said, it's bittersweet. Right. You know, you, you're, you you're bringing them joy, but you're, you just look at the situation and like, how could this be happening to them? Yeah. You no, know, it's, it's very hard uh, sometimes. Yeah, it, it is. And like I said, there's just, sometimes there's just no rhyme or reason to it. And, and, you know, it just kind of, you know, it always, it always catches, you know, people off guard and families off guard, but that's, you no, know, that's a great like, thing about what yeah. you guys are doing there as, you know, as a form of a safety net and a form of support and things like that. So, mm -hmm. um, Patrick, let me ask you this. What's some of the things you do uh, uh, throughout the year as far as like fundraising or the big fundraisers or that you do or? Yeah. So um, just this past September is one of our largest events, which Jerry actually has a shirt on for. It's our uh, Christmas dog cancer uh, 5K run slash walk. Um, it's located here in Evergreen Park. Um, this year was probably one of our biggest Best years. Year yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so many people from the community we even had some people from out of state do it virtually because uh, we gave the option to do it virtually or in person uh -huh. um and just you donate money you know and, and you walk the community you run through the run the streets around here um it's so nice it really is and yeah. you see a lot of survivors and the, the i always stay at the finish line to give the patients a high five and um some of them are in wheelchairs 
Uh, it's just it's just so cool. It's really a great day. Yeah, yeah. And we we all work so hard. That's our biggest event. Yeah. It's but it's our yeah. best event because I think it's the one that brings me more most joy. Yeah. 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 No, you meet a lot. You meet you a lot meet of different lot people, people and um you know just kind of sharing stories from one another you know i know from what we've seen to what people have dealt with throughout their families you know uh -huh. loved ones that may have passed away and you know we get, it's a nice way to honor um some of their loved ones you know right and right it's very cool to be out there and very cool to be with all these people and um especially after covid this year was very special yeah, yeah. it was Absolutely. our first year because we had to do it but every year we have honorees that we honor that are survivors of cancer. And um, this year we honored three people and um, each one of them had such a beautiful story. We honored um, a, a young girl who was diagnosed a few months after uh, getting married with a, she was diagnosed with a pediatric cancer um, and it was a bone cancer. It was Ewing sarcoma and um, she she went to hell and back <laughs> yeah. and um she's now doing well and she's working as a nurse navigator to help cancer patients and she just recently joined us on our committee oh nice so, yeah because you know we helped her a little bit uh -huh. and um she was just so grateful and now she's on our committee and she's a great advocate for some of the cancer patients to the young ones uh -huh. she can talk to they they would be able to talk to her and then we also honored um, a young man, a father of two, a married father of two, uh, who has leukemia and still under treatment and just an all around great family guy. And then our last honoree, who's the one, I can't, this kid was so amazing, diagnosed freshman year of high school with lymphoma. And it was going to be a pretty simple treatment, you know, just you know, chemo radiation, you're good to go. But unfortunately, it didn't go that way for him. And he, it just kept reoccurring and reoccurring and reoccurring. And the family just basically went all over the country to get him treatment. Finally, to make a long story short, he uh, had transplant and then went into septic shock and was um, on, in intensive care for several weeks on a vent. And it was his prognosis was very poor, and I'm happy to say he's amazing now. He's he's a college student. He's oh, wow. he's you know it's he's doing it's the I'm so proud of these honorees, and there's so many more. Way I could honor hundreds all day, you yeah. know, but they're these two just stood out because they were they've been through so much. Right. Right. Well, I'll have to mark my calendar for next year's uh, event and try and try to get up there. You guys aren't terribly far from me, and and, and I know oh, that'd be my, great. Yeah, yeah I, I know me and my wife would be uh, tickled to go up there and participate and help out. She, uh, um, we don't, you know, uh, she here a few years back, uh, you know, had her own, um, you know, I, I guess you call it cancer scare. She ended up finding out she had uh, thyroid cancer. And so she had, so she had her thyroid out and uh, went through that. But, uh, you know, it's still, you know, it's, it's still a, a, you know, situation to deal with. It's not as bad as what some people get it, but you still, you know, it's a, it's stressful and, you know, mentally exhausting. And, under treatment and, now or? Oh, she's fine now. She's, uh, they, they, you know, they took her thyroid and gave her the uh, radioactive iodine treatment. Right. And then, uh, and since then, she's been clean as a whistle every time she gets tested. So, that's good. Yeah, yeah that's good. That. Yeah, yeah and, I used uh, to, uh, I used to work in radiation oncology, so I know uh, just what she, yeah. what she went through. So and, that's good and, news. She's doing it great. It is. It is. And you know, of course, you know, to be completely honest with you, you know, you tell people that, and they're like, "Oh, well, you got the kind, the cancer that you know, the good kind, because it's easy to treat." And it's like, really. It's still like completely overwhelmingly stressful, well, you, still can't you know, and mentally or, exhausting, you know, and yeah, so I can yeah, imagine what you heard and you're uh, just overwhelmed right. immediately. Right. You know, so yeah. it's like, you know, yeah, because they've got this one figured out doesn't mean it, you know, makes it absolutely easier, you know, well, and, every and, patient and, is unique. Yeah. And stuff. So, but, uh, 
Um, and of course, uh, you know, my sister-in-law, you know, has had her, you know, uh, a battle with Brett's cancer and she's fine now too. You know, she's uh, had some things done and, and, and she's, she's tested good for several years now. So. Good. Yeah. That's yeah. Great yeah. So, you know, like I said, it's every, um, I, I could probably, you know, probably everybody in, in, in the States and, and around the world has known somebody or themselves been, uh, affected by cancer. I'm going to ask you this. It's just a question I could come up with here while you was talking. Um, let's say, uh, let, let's say my neighbor across the street, you know, I, I find out gets a, a cancer diagnosis and I want to help. What would be the first advice you would give me to help them, you know, uh, to help them out? You know, would it be, you know, you know, just encouragement? Would it be, you know, something mm -hmm. financial, a little of both, but what, what would be your advice to someone that, that has someone and, and isn't sure exactly how to help. I know, you know, the hardest part for some of these patients is they, they're afraid to reach out for help. Mm -hmm. They are, even if people offer there, there's, you know, some people are just so proud. Um, I would offer support, encouragement. I would drop stuff off at their house, you know, like, um, I don't know, like everybody gets casseroles around here. Yeah. Um, you know, just a, a note saying, I'm thinking of you. I, you stay know, strong. Yeah, stay strong. Anything you can do to support them. But the little, I, I find that the little things mean so much. Like if you went off and paid off their house, it'd be like, oh, yeah, that's great. But I, the little things mm -hmm. mean so much to people. They do. I mean, some of the people, you know, we have a lot of uh, people that, that support us that are previous recipients of ours. Mm -hmm. And they they come back to us and support us as a as a way of paying it forward. Right. So that's the beauty of this organization. And um, encouragement. Oh, um, oh, that's right. I'm sorry, I lost my train of thought. Encouragement notes. At, you know what I do right now. I have a friend going through chemo and radiation. I'll text her. Some people don't want to talk because everybody mm -hmm. wants you. Know, it's like you're telling your story 15 times, you know, mm -hmm. so that just shoot them a text or a funny, a funny joke or, you know, a funny Instagram or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, offer support, drop off little things. But before I find some, some patients are so overwhelmed that they appreciate a text or like, can I, if you, they would text them and say, can I come by someday this week? What time is good for you? Because if they're under treatment and they're not feeling good that day, they can kind of time what time to come or what day to come when they're feeling better. Right. So. Okay. That's, that's yeah, and any kind of support, you know, any kind of support you could, you know, yeah, you like a neighbor, yeah, you know, like she said, yeah. it's, the, it's the little things. Yeah, little, little things, things mean that. so much. I mean, Mow their lawn, you know, or you know, buy them a turkey. Uh, you know, just the little things. Take their garbage out, their garbage cans out, you know. That's just shovel for them. I don't know, what, you know, shoveling is a big thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you guys get that a little bit more than I do, but it does, it does happen around yeah. here. Some, so it sure does. So, Patrick, tell everybody where they can uh, find uh, Christmas without cancer. Yeah, so all our events, pictures, photos, any, all information. Um, you can also donate at our website. That's uh, christmaswithoutcancer.org. Um, everything's on there. And like I said, we were talking about the Christmas Without Cancer, the 5K. Um, we also have, um, this is new as of this past year, is our golf outing, yeah. our four cause golf outing that we started this year, which was a huge success. Uh, we have that um, most likely in June this year. Yeah. So we look forward to doing that again. And then um, in November, we have, another event called harvesting hope it's just another local uh no, lo local event you know all money raised that the fundraiser goes right some to great raffle prizes yeah great. it's, a, it's yes. a big raffle uh big raffle event and all the money raised goes straight to christmas without cancer oh that's fantastic and uh here uh, on christmas clatter all month long we have a special limited uh, uh run on our t-shirts the link will be uh, down in the show notes and description and, and you see the the shirt here on the screen if anybody buys any uh, t-shirt coffee mug sticker that has this logo from uh, uh, on it 
uh, with Christmas without cancer from our store. All proceeds of that will go uh, directly to Jerry and Patrick and the uh, Christmas without cancer crew to, to uh, help support their cause. So I encourage yeah, each good. and every one to go to that's the website and, and to donate and to go pick up a t-shirt as well um, and to help, you know, make Christmas happen for these families and, and uh, I really appreciate you guys uh, hopping on here with me and, and telling me your story about um, Christmas without cancer. And I hope you guys are, uh, don't stay strangers, you know, come around. All right. Yeah, yeah. This was yeah fun. We, we would love to have you out yeah. of our events. Yeah. This year. That'd be great. We'd love to see it. Yeah. I, I, I definitely will be making plans at least to get up at that, uh, that, that uh, 5k in September, that, that timing time of year really works out for me and and uh, i think that's that's something we wow. are going to be marking the, the the calendar for for 2022 so awesome well, thank uh, you well thanks so much guys and you you guys have a merry christmas hey todd you, you too. too thank you so much keep the spirits up this holiday season christmas clatter is a very merry media production and remember keep christmas hope alive every day <laughs>